To acquire vampiric powers, you will need to do your seasonal quest until they are unlocked. Once they are unlocked, they can be found in your inventory. They will be on the left of the equipment right here, which opens your vampiric tabs. There is five slots available, and each one of these slots can be filled with one of these abilities. In order to unlock new abilities, once you've unlocked powers in general, you will need potent blood. Potent blood can be received at this blood harvest sort of area, which is the new seasonal mechanic or one of the new seasonal mechanics, I should say. This is an area that has a bounty board. This bounty board will give you a number of rewards just for completing this blood harvest area, as well as this bounty board is permanent, meaning all the progress you made will transfer to the next one, etc. So you don't have to worry about logging out. And there is always a blood harvest up, including the blood lures that you get from doing this area will always continue and save as well. So any of the progress you make at any time of the blood harvest, it, it is sort of possible. You can come back at any time and continue to get it. Now the blood lures like the one I just received right there can be used to do these little mini events and these mini events will give you potent blood. So if I come over here to one of these, for instance, which is the altar, I can use 15 of the blood lures I got from killing minions around this area. And now I've summoned these two mobs. I will kill these mobs and these mobs will have for us the materials we need for our vampiric power. Here we go, we are killing them, and you can see that one dropped potent blood, but it also dropped a Seeker's Key, and we also get pretty good loot from the kills as well. Now it drops Cleansing Acid. We will talk about Cleansing Acid and Pack of Ferocity in just a moment. Now the key I got from killing those guys, you will get secret keys occasionally in this area. These secret keys will open these chests and these chests once again will have these packs as well as those cleansing materials. It will also have blood lures for more of the activities around this area as well as potent blood for you to use on your vampiric powers. So now we understand how to unlock vampiric powers. Now we understand what the five slots are and we understand how to get the potent blood in order to upgrade or unlock. When we actually have the potent blood, we can click here on spend on the vampiric power menu. This is gonna give us three randomized selections, one of which could be something you have not unlocked and you can allocate experience in order to unlock it. Keep in mind, these all cost the same. You are using 25 of your potent bloods for each one of these. Or you can choose to level one of the abilities that you prefer. For instance, let's say I like tear, I could use 25 of my points to give me one experience. Every time you level will be one of the experience. So if it says five experience, you need to level it five times. Now I am three out of five experience on that one. Keep in mind, it is random. And if you hit escape, it will randomly choose. So if I clicked on that, that money is considered spent. And if I escape out of that, it is going to randomly choose. So there's no clicking being like, I don't like any of these. And then escaping to try to get another RNG. No, you are locked in and you should choose one immediately after spending those points. So now you have the powers unlocked, you have some points and you've leveled some of them and you have your five positions available. How do you actually get these to activate? Well, you're gonna notice that four of these have a red line to them and it's sort of glowing. That's because these ones are active and this one does not have a red line and it's not active. The reason it's not active is we don't have enough packs. The packs up top on the left side are the ones that you have available and equipped and on the right side are required in order to use your vampiric powers. Keep in mind each vampiric power and you can see here requires a different activation cost. This is effectively just your requirements for making the item work. This is not something you constantly have to worry about reactivating. In fact, none of these abilities are activatable. They don't go on your bar. They're all passive based. These are just things that in order for these passives to actually work work. So if you look here, I need two more skulls because I have 10 required skulls, but I only have uh, eight skulls total. So we're short two skulls. So if I wanted to get more skulls, what I could do is this is where these packs that I was talking about will come in handy. Okay. Now let's say that we don't, because I don't have any skulls with me, let's say we need Furi Furiosity. All right. What I can do is I can right click on this pack of Furiosity and I can put them on a piece of gear. Now you're going to notice the helmets here says packs granted two out of three. That is because a helmet can have three, a chest can have five, gloves can have five, legs can have four, and boots can have three. So if you don't have your limit, you can actually go ahead and put on another one of these packs, aka another one of these activation cost pieces. So I could put the, the ferocity on the helmet and now we are three out of three. Now let's say I messed up and I'm like, oh wait, no, I actually want three of the cups. I don't want, you know, the, the one of those and two of those. What you can do is use the cleansing acid you get from the same areas as the packs and you can go ahead and scrub that out. And then I could go one, two and three, and now I have three cups. And once again, I could cleanse that out and do this as many times as I want. Because this is the way it works and because you can get these packs just from farming the game naturally, that means it's not too big of a deal to upgrade your gear. When you get a new piece of gear, you will be able to go in there and put your packs on it in order to match the, the vampiric powers that you choose to use. 
You also can get the potent blood in order to unlock an upgrade from places outside of just that blood harvest area I showed you. You can also get them from some events. So if you're doing dungeons, for instance, uh, some of the events will have blood wells. When you know this an event has a blood well, it is a seasonal version of that event and you can actually claim more potent bloods from doing that event. So here I have an item. It is an upgraded item compared to the other item I have as Overpower and Ranks of Pulverize. I like that a good deal, but it only has one of the packs, whereas this has five packs. So what I'm gonna do is because as one of the packs I already won, I want it to be exact replica of this one, which has four of these in one of the cups. I'm gonna use three more of these ferocities. Now it has four of those and I will use one of the cups and now I can equip that and I will lose exactly none of my vampiric skills because it is exactly the amount of packs of the other one. There is one exception to acquiring these. Some of these powers are unlocked through quests. So if you actually look and hover over the one you want, you can see where you can acquire some of these. So you see how this one says acquired from Blood Harvest. This one here says acquired with Potent Blood. This one says Beckoning Thirst Quest. So some of these powers will come from seasonal quests. Some of these are going to come from activities or seasonal activities. For instance, this one is the Blood Harvest in order to get this one. And then some of these you will get purely through unlocking through Potent Blood. When you actually upgrade one, you see how this costs five experience and this one's going from two to three. It's like Paragon Glyphs where it costs more experience. So as you level these, it will become more and more expensive. The blue line is the one that will be upgraded. So this was 40 seconds, now went to 30 seconds. So if you want to know what you're upgrading, it is always going to be the blue. Because the Blood Harvest area has bonus rewards from the board, if you look at this board here, these rewards can be actually decent. This is also where you get one of the vampiric powers on top of the Blood Harvest area, having multiple whispers. This is this is where I would recommend leveling your vampiric powers. This is also quite good experience. The mob density is fairly large here. You have those seeker caches, which are a good uh, form of acquiring items, especially after a world here. If you save up your seekers by leveling these and you do the world here capstone, then you go to the caches and you use your keys. You can get a whole bunch of sacred items real quick. This is a great place to level on top of it. There is a bonus event that appears on the map. It's this green skull here. When you go here, it's gonna say Blood Lure Pedestos. And if you put three of these 50 cost Blood Lure Pedestos here, it will activate an event of them just throwing a ton of minions at you. It's like a survival horde type of situation. At the end, you'll have a whole bunch of elites and those elites will drop an absolute ton of legendary. So if you're looking for great experience, farm out this area, get 150 of these, activate this every time, and you will be loaded in legendaries fairly quickly as well as time of experience. Also want to shout out this right here, Hemomancy. You can get this one just through Potent Blood Standard, and it's anytime you do an activation or an ability of some sort, even getting on your horse counts or dodging counts, you can see that damage in AoE. What it would do is use your maximum life in order to draw damage from each of these enemies. And this damage is uh, good enough in the beginning of the game to really help carry you through killing the small minions like bats, etc. So in World Tier 2, Hamomancy level one was actually chewing through everything. So I, and look at that, just that's half of his damage just from using my dash, for instance, and it's targeted on everything. It's sort of like a Vladimir E from League of Legends. It would just, it's automatic targeted damage, kills anything that's like a one HP, one shot type of situation. And it's, it's, it's every four seconds. It also scales off your max HP. So if you're doing overpower, max HP type of build, which is better this season, it pairs, pairs really well with that as well. So big shout out to Hemomancy. That's pretty much all the basics you need to know for this. Don't forget, if you hit escape here, it is going to randomly activate it. So you cannot trigger your RNG by going back and forth right there, just a heads up. That's about it. Love you all. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the live stream today.